Thank you for coming and welcome to our webinar, Scale Your Service Beyond the Border. I'm Jason Tinder, Head of Marketing here at TowerPay. If you have a question, anytime during the presentation, click the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we'll answer them in the order received. We have lots to cover today, so I'm going to let our CEO and co-founder, Rodney Robinson, take it from here. Rodney? Hey, good morning, everyone. We're going to discuss a couple things, but what I'd love to get out of the webinar are a couple. Well, first is Canada and how U.S. financial technology companies can easily set up a domestic service in Canada or even a service that is in Canada that lets you disperse money outside the border. Anytime a company wants to expand into another geography, probably just one of the hardest things to solve is payments and banking, and we'll run through how to do that. Uh, additionally, we want to teach everyone how they can do cross-border payments if they want to do payouts in other countries instantly. Uh, we're going to cover that. And then following those two items, there's going to be a fireside chat with Manoj in the, the senior VP of product at Onbi, who's one of our customers, and then we'll do a, a Q&A. Okay, so at the end of the webinar, we'd love you to know how to set up your service in Canada for serving Canadian customers, as well as if you want to do cross-border payments and how you can how you can do that from either Canada or the United States. All right, so as we said, the hardest thing about setting up a service in another country is, is solving banking and payments. And with uh, in Canada, we have a service live in Canada that includes both a banking partner, uh, our acquiring service, and connections to Visa and MasterCard. So through our single API, you can, you can simply connect uh, to Canada and the United States. Uh, it's very similar to the United States where we can do instant payouts to Canadian customers through the Visa and MasterCard networks as well as collect that back, either a debt repayment or account funding. So lenders in Canada can disperse funds instantly, uh, collect those, those loan proceeds back, or early wage advance companies can disperse instantly and collect back, as well as companies that offer a cryptocurrency or bank accounts can simply do account funding and then disperse out. So the same services are available in Canada across Visa and MasterCard networks, uh, we additionally have a relationship with People's Trust of Canada, and we can facilitate getting a bank account so you can pre-fund those accounts or receive money in Canada. So again, it's very straightforward uh, for you to do uh, through, through our system. If you look at what's available and when it's available, as I said uh, today, uh, in the U.S., of course, you can uh, uh, we have 14 banking partners, and you can both disperse and collect from cards. Uh, you can do cross-border or domestic in the United States. Uh, in Canada, uh, it's, it's almost an identical service. You can push or pull from cards, Visa and MasterCard. You can do bank transfers, so the equivalent of ACH in Canada. And additionally, from both countries, you can do cross-border payments. You can send money from the U.S. to, say, Philippines or Canada to, say, the Philippines as well. One thing you can't do yet that we're working on is moving money between Canada and the United States, right, through Visa and MasterCard. For whatever reason, that border is the most closely guarded border uh, when it comes to money movement, um, but you can do both domestic inside U.S. and Canada and outbound. Additionally, we're rolling out Peru and Chile this quarter, so you'll be able to have similar services uh, on push to card, at least, in Chile and Peru, so you can, you can uh, disperse funds in Canada, U.S., Peru and Chile instantly, and then followed quickly after that of Brazil and Mexico. So our view is we want to give you a, a Western Hemisphere view on these instant payouts and let you do domestic transfers and set up your service in all these countries. But today, uh, it's U.S. and Canada, and then uh, really just in a matter of weeks, it'll be Peru and Chile as well, and then followed in 2022 by Brazil and Mexico. Okay. On cross-border payments, there's, uh, uh, there's, there's various markets you can do. And this is all about sending money from the U.S., either a person-to-person -person payment or a person to, or excuse me, a merchant to a person payment or even a merchant to another uh, company. So B2B or B2C works, B2B, B2C, or P2P works. And if you look at the blue countries, the blue countries are countries that we can send to. So as an example, I can go to the United States. Uh, to Mexico, banks in Mexico instantly, 
uh, United States to Brazil. I can even go to Ukraine uh, or uh, uh, you know other countries. You can see Australia. Many countries are enabled. And what we have today is push the card. And so you can disperse instantly to Mexico or Ukraine or, or parts of Europe today uh, from Canada, the United States. We're adding bank account as well. So shortly you'll be able to push US to card as well as US to bank account. Today, we have push to card enabled and we see a lot of activity in uh, the Caribbean. So Dominican Republic is popular, Philippines are popular, uh, Ukraine. The number one destination prior to sanctions was actually Russia. Uh, for whatever reason, Russia was our most popular push to card destination. And now it's, it's Dominican Republic and parts of, of uh, Latin America. Uh, but, but today you can push to card, uh, tomorrow you can push to card and push to account. Uh, the way it works is that uh, just like the United States, uh, when you want to do a domestic disbursement, you would enter the beneficiary's card or bank account instructions in the beneficiary country. You can disperse from the U.S. either in U.S. dollars or in the beneficiary currency. If you want to push the card and have those funds show up instantly, you want to push in the beneficiary currency. So if you want to go to the U.K., you would push to pounds. You, you would push the the money in pound sterling, and that person would get the exact amount in pound sterling instantly into their visa account. And then you would see a, a dollar settlement from your account next morning. Okay, the service works very well. Uh, it's live. It, a couple of our banks, we, we do this at Cross River Bank and Evolve Bank and Trust today, and we're adding additional acquiring banks in the US to do this from. And then push to bank account is coming shortly where you can disperse to bank accounts, not just cards, in you know, all the countries shown on the map in green or blue, and there are options for both instant as well as delayed. And you'll see that in upcoming release we have in May, okay? And then the service is available in Canada as well. So it's both, it's both uh, uh, Canada and the United States. A push to international bank accounts require additional, excuse me, push to international cards require additional information. Uh, you will have to put the beneficiary information. In the U.S., all we require is the name and the card number. In uh, non-U.S., we will need the uh, country, the, uh, in some cases, address information. So you, you would need the uh, beneficiary's name, uh, potentially address, and the uh, country and city that they're located in. But that's the information needed. <clears throat> Additionally, a sanction screen is required. So on that beneficiary, you'll have to do a sanction screen uh, through our system. So the bank has visibility into uh, the sanctions cleared and who the beneficiary is. But you'll find the service is very similar to the United States uh, domestic, okay? And, and typically, if you're sending money to someone, you know their, their name and address. So typically that's not an issue, okay? Uh, uh, the way it works is uh, first you, you can get an FX rate from our system if you want to push to say Mexico. You can give us the beneficiary uh, card number and, and, the, and we will give you the, uh, the FX rate real time. Uh, we then suggest you do a, a sanction screen through our system. So we'll need, need a name and a country. Uh, if you give us a, a date of birth, it would be less likely to get a false positive, but that's optional. But we get a name and country from you. We'll return a a clear or not. If it's cleared, you can then just enter a transaction to the beneficiary's card in their currency or US dollars. And in this case, the, the sender is sending 5,487 uh, Dominican pesos uh, to Maria. And so she would receive that exact amount. And then the next morning, we would come and pull $100 or the equivalent at that time from your account. Okay, but if you send a beneficiary currency, they'll get the exact amount. The data, just to summarize, is the name and address information of that beneficiary. And then uh, we do want a sanction screen done on that beneficiary before uh, the send is done, uh, just to make sure there's no, no uh, sanction hit, okay? And it is easier than you think to go live in Canada. We have quite a few U.S. merchants that have opened their service in Canada. Uh, Canada's number of people is similar to the size of California, so it's a, it's a, it's a actually a big market. And of course, everyone's banked in Canada, so push to cards is a great solution. Pull from cards is a great solution. 
but we will connect you to a, a bank to open an account to either receive or fund disbursements. We'll register you with the networks based on the use case, but uh, lenders, wage advance companies, uh, even uh, well, th those are probably the two most popular cases we have in Canada today. Uh, loans and wage advance companies that have opened service in Canada. Uh, but we handle the registration with the bank in Canada for the sponsorship. You open the account in, in your, uh, in, in, you know, for you, you can fund that, uh, you know, for a push to card or you can receive money into that. We handle the registrations, then you go live. The nice uh, thing is that it's the same API you use today. And so if you're set up properly, we can just assign a new sub-client ID or client ID for you, and you can go live fairly quickly in Canada. And you can also do the ACH equivalent, which is uh, EFT in Canada. So you can do that as well. Uh, so you can either, you can get money to anyone in Canada, either through EFT or push to card, and you can collect back either through EFT or pull from card. So all that works in Canada. Additionally, there's additional risk features in Canada. Uh, that uh, mitigate chargebacks. So by rule, 3D Secure is required in Canada. So if you want to do an account funding, you have to use 3D Secure uh, 2.0, which would mean that you wouldn't have any risk of chargeback. Uh, so Canada mandates 3DS, which protects you against chargebacks, and it makes the experience uh, fairly seamless for your customers as well. Okay. Uh, let's talk sanction screening. Uh, we, we, if you want to disperse money uh, outside the United States or outside of Canada, you will have to do a sanction screen uh, through our API. And uh, uh, the trick is to avoid false positives. You do that by passing the name in the country to us and minimizes false positives. If you pass the date of birth, you likely wouldn't get false positives, but it is required uh, if you're moving money outside of either Canada or the United States. And, and we can check various lists. In the US, we check the, the US uh, OFAC list. In Canada, they have another set of lists we check, but all that's hidden from you. And through the API, we just need a name at a minimum. A name and, and country would help uh, a lot too. Uh, in Canada, it is applicable to certain domestic industries. So in the US, you don't, uh, we don't have any domestic US disbursements that require a sanction screen. In Canada, there are segment businesses that will require a sanction screen to move money from you as a merchant to a Canadian beneficiary. Again, the API is available and it's fairly easy to invoke, but in Canada domestic, some of the uh, transactions will require a sanction screen. And we can give you more detail on that if, uh, uh, if you need information. And, and lastly, before I turn it over to, uh, to the Fireside Chat, is that through our system, we try to give you the speed and control where you can do instant payments or not delayed. We try to make it simple. And adding Canada to it, we, we try to keep the simplicity. So um, we, we, you simply need to get additional credentials for us to disperse in Canada or to collect in Canada. So from a technical standpoint, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the cost is very similar across the board of the visa costs are a little cheaper than the United States. And it's all in Canadian dollars, which makes it even cheaper. Uh, but it's it's the same system, the same method, the same settlement model, US and Canada, same reporting that you get, except in Canadian dollars versus US dollars. So it should be very, very easy for you to uh, to go live in Canada. All right, uh, I will turn it back to you, Jason. Thank you, Rodney. Um, let's go to our fireside chat with Manoj and Tracy now. Get here, and there we go. Thanks, Jason, and welcome to our fireside chat today to discuss domestic and cross-border instant money movement and how clients are using TavaPay to expand and improve cross-border expansion experiences. If we haven't met before, I'm Manoj Verma, co-founder and chief revenue officer of TavaPay. And for those who are not as familiar with TavaPay, let me spend a few seconds and tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. We are an acquiring processor focused on serving fintechs with instant money movement solutions, money in, money out. We process for 16 banks in the United States and People's Trust in Canada. We serve over 2,000 fintechs on our platform, including some of the largest program managers and processors like Onbi, Payfair, Marketa, some of the largest neobanks like Chime and Dave, 
some of the leading EWA players like Ernan and Albert and lenders like Upgrade and LendingPoint, all with solutions that allow our partners to move money instantly. Fund or load an account in real time with zero risk, account to account money movements, P2P money movements, earn wage access, tip payouts, commission payouts, incentives, etc. I'm delighted today to be joined by Tracy Monson with Onbi. Thanks, Tracy, for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit more about Onbi and your clients? Yeah, thanks, Manoj. It's great to be here today. A little bit about Onbi. We are the industry's experts in business to individual disbursements. So for 25 years, we've modernized payments on behalf of the world's leading brands. We help them pay their customers and their workforces. Our clients can outsource their entire payment operations to us, offloading the cost, complexity, and risk that often comes with those payments. Onbi takes all of that on, and then we deliver a payment experience that's instant, convenient, and flexible. So we have payment solutions for incentives, think rebates, loyalty programs, domestic and global payroll, refunds, claims and settlements, and a great set of features for the freelance gig and creator spaces. You'll find our customers in telco, automotive, insurance, consumer goods, financial services, and many other industries. We are US-based and we've helped our customers pay people in over 180 countries, nine currencies, and FX conversions worldwide. Well, that's great. Can you tell us about when and why you started working with TopPay? Clearly you work with a number of processors today. What, uh, what drove your choice in working with us? Yeah, so OnBee's Top of Pay journey started over three years ago because we could see consumer preferences were changing. Every year we run a study on the future of payments and you and I could probably predict this as consumers ourselves. The top three most important factors when getting paid are choice, speed and convenience. So 75% of consumers prefer digital payment methods and it's not just because they're fast. Over 60% of people trust that they're more secure as well. So then you throw a pandemic into the mix that accelerated the need for brands to pay instantly and get away from physical mailed options like a check. And we were very happy to be well positioned through our partnership with you to support real time transfers to bank accounts. Post pandemic actually in our programs that offer choice between a real time option or a slower older method, the real time option is taken more than 60% of the time. So Manoj, we launched our original partnership together focused on US dollars, um, but Onbi has supported payment programs in Canada for over a decade. So when we learned that you all were expanding to include Canadian dollars, we were excited and we added a real-time transfer option to our Canadian offering last year, thanks to your support. That's great. We're excited to have you as a partner up there. Can you spend a few minutes maybe chat a little bit about what your experience it was in in working with us and in expanding in, in expanding to Canada, so others get to learn from from how easy that was. Yeah, um, so we put together cross border and local payment options in many countries. So from experience, I can tell you, this expansion to Canada, working with Top of Pay, was our fastest to market. Um, for the tech lift, it was really a matter of adjusting our integration with your unified API. And then we had to add in the right identity screenings for the region. And then I'll say too, where I think your team just really stood out for us was um, there are always learnings when you enter a new market. Compliance and regulatory pieces, address verification nuances, these little things that make a huge difference. And your team offered great support to us on those topics. We also established a tri-party bank relationships together, uh, which your team made very easy. And then you connected us with the right folks at the networks and the payment rails to give us more market insight, localize everything correctly, and make sure we were really set up for success. I'm going to ask you, sure. uh, I haven't, haven't gotten to ask you this question. So you focused first on instant money movement in the US, uh, and then you picked Canada. Why did you start your expansion plans there? Good question. Um, so we support over 2,000 fintechs today, and many of their customers uh, operate in multiple multiple jurisdictions and geographies. So Canada was the number one request that we were receiving from our partners. So we started there first, plus its proximity to the United States. Now, many of our partners serve multinational companies that have expressed an interest in serving their customers in various uh, countries. 
They've guided us now to South America, starting in Peru and Chile, which we'll have launched by the end of Q2. And we're starting with payouts in those countries because that's what our partners are asking for. Later this year, we're going to work towards enabling pull transactions to complement uh, the payout tra uh, transactions that will be in those countries. After that, we aspire to, to light up a handful of other markets, Brazil, Mexico, and the broader countries of the Caribbean before year end, again, to serve our customers. We're going to continue to offer a, a, ver a vertically integrated solution that provides instant payments and lower costs for our customers. It's not an easy lift as there's so many different regulatory and operating requirements that differ per country. Product offerings like AVS and 3DS often don't work outside the US. So we're working with the networks and other third parties to stand up alternative solutions to ensure risk and coverage are maximized for our partners. We've been pleasantly surprised with the demand for our services in Canada with existing customers expanding there. Yourselves, obviously, Remitly, PayActive and others, and even local companies like WellSimple in, US, in Canada are interested in other markets. We also allow Canadian companies who want to expand from Canada to the US and are seeing traction there. In short, our value prop resonates with clients for better, faster, cheaper payment options, multiple network and rail options, and embedded banking partners per market. All of this connected with a single unified API with a global view of data and reporting. In addition to our geographic expansion, we're doubling down on our cross-border efforts to better serve our customers. Push to Card today is live with MasterCard and Visa. And in Q2, you'll see us introduce Push to Account to hundreds of countries. Now you can see how we'll address your instant money movement needs wherever you're going to operate. Tracy, let me ask you another question beyond Canada. Can you speak a little bit more on how Ambi is leveraging Tab Pay for, for your other cross-border needs? Yeah, it. Um, when you were talking, it really resonated. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that cross-border demand too, especially when it comes to um, contractor payments, payments to influencers, gig workers, the creator space. Uh, and then many of our large US-based multinational customers have these last mile needs in these harder to reach countries. And they don't want to, and they really shouldn't have to sacrifice speed and choice when they're paying around the world. So next up for us, we're going to be kicking off a pilot using Tabapay's push to card capabilities to introduce real time options for cross border, supporting many of those use cases I just talked about. That's great. Well, let's, uh, Tracy, this is just a short little chat today. I really want to thank you and the Ombi team for, for joining us. We're excited to see how Ombi will continue to innovate on our platform. Is there anything else you want to cover in another minute or two? Thanks for having me. Um, I'll just say as a fully managed disbursements platform, we are laser focused on innovating business to individual payments. And we are thankful and, and appreciative of our strong partners like Taba Pay who are doing your part to innovate the instant money movement space. Well, thank you again for joining us. And let me pass this back to Jason who will open the floor up to Q&A. Thank you, Noj. Um, we're back here. And what I wanted to do is, <clears throat> before we go to q and I want to announce our next webinar, Risk-Free Account Funding. We'll be introducing our new solution for real-time account funding and other ways we can help you improve payment experiences for your customers. We'll be sending out the announcement via email and on LinkedIn in the coming weeks. So let's go ahead and jump into questions. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A box. Um, it looks like we do have a couple in so far. So let's go ahead and move to that. Uh, first question actually is for Tracy with Omni. Um, Tracy, what are the most common use cases for Onbi in Canada? All right, uh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, sure, thank you for the question. Uh, so the use cases we support in Canada are um, typically a story of, of following our customers and their expansion plans. So I, I mentioned a couple of them, um, but we're supporting real-time payments in sales commissions, um, refunds, so think about exiting subscribers from subscription services or internet and cable providers. Um, we're supporting claims and appeasement payments, payments to contractors and gig workers, um, as well as payments uh, related to expense reimbursement and expense management. Cool, thank you. So Brian, we have a question from the audience. It's, um, is it possible to use Tavapay as an individual or do I need an incorporated company? I'm in the US. Thank you. Uh, you need to be an incorporated company. 
uh, if you're an individual, you can sign up with one of our many customers uh, that, that offer services for individuals. Okay. We have another one, and the question is, push to account requires what data from the recipient? Routing an account? Not standardized like a 16-digit PAN. Yeah, it depends on the geography, and we'll have an FAQ on this. But uh, in some countries, we'll need the unique, uh, uh, like a, a, a routing, it's, it's a, a bank ID and a um, account number. In some places, we may need a SWIFT code and an account number. So it's going to be based on the country. There'll be a, a separate uh, set of credentials you're going to have to enter. Okay. And, and you'll see that in the FAQ when we publish the API. Cool. All right, we have one, less, one last question, Rodney. Um, it is, how does cross-border work into the United States? So it doesn't today. U.S. banks don't allow a cross-border payment in the United States. We're working with one of the networks to try to enable a pilot. Uh, U.S. and Canadian banks don't allow inbound payments today. And we're trying to change that by running a pilot and showing how safe it can be. And so we will, um, as soon as we have approval to do this, we'll solicit our customer base and see who wants to actually be on the receive side, because it won't be every issuer that turns it on. As an example, our neobanks may be uh, the first ones that want to try to pilot this, where they can enable their accounts to be receive points for international payments. That would be an interesting differentiator to have these neobanks be instant instant receipt points for non-U.S. payments, and we'll contact all of our neobank audience when we uh, have network permission to do it, which we're working on now. Okay? Cool. All right. We're right at the top of the hour, so um, if anybody else has anything to say, um, speak up now for everyone to get peace. I wanted to thank Tracy and Anbi. I wanted to thank Manoj, and of course, I always want to thank Rodney um, for all the valuable information that you guys disseminated today. So if you have any further questions about TowerPay, um, what we do, how to get in contact with us, contact us at sales at TowerPay.com, or you can send an email to marketing at TowerPay. There's also going to be a survey at the end of the webinar. Please answer it and give us any suggestions. Um, we're always looking for ways to improve this webinar series and answer your needs the best way possible. So thank you very much. And if anybody else has anything to say, go ahead and say it. All right, we're good to go. Thank you very much.